Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rich From Off The Cuff. Today we have a new release from a channel favorite, uh, the brand Stoa. Now, a little bit about Stoa. They were founded back in 1927 out of Germany. They're basically a micro brand with very strong ties to the original Flieger models as well as uh, the original Bauhaus watches. Now, a few common characteristics and design language when you're looking at this particular type of watch, which is, of course, a pilot's watch, you're going to be looking for something that has a real balance of legibility and functionality. So I think it's very clear um, by the designs you're seeing here that these are definitely no frills models. Now, the particular model that is under review for today is going to be the new Flieger Verus um, release uh, versus the Flieger Classic, which is here on the left. So as you can see, I thought it would be nice to get a pretty good comparison because they're essentially the same case with different finishings and then of course different dial, hand setup, uh, different movement as well. So for those of you that are maybe on the fence between the two or maybe you've always enjoyed the look of the classic but wanted something more modern, I think the Fliegerverse definitely has something for you. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Okay. So first let's do a couple of side-by-side -side comparisons. As you can see, some of the main differences here are going to be basically the more classic style versus the more modernistic design aesthetic as well as the movements. As you can see here, a much more standard base movement versus the top grade uh, finished movement with the custom rotor. So, I mean, as far as differences, that's pretty much going to be the, the main differences you're going to see is they're really going to be aesthetic. As far as build quality goes, I'd say they're both equally um, built very, very well. But let's go ahead and put down the Flieger Classic real quick and focus a bit on this new Flieger model. So, um, you know, the Verus definitely offers that classic onion style pilot's crown, uh, as you can see there really nice and definitely speaks the design language. I mean, you see this and you instantly know that it is a Flieger watch. Actually, let's go ahead and wipe off my fingerprints there really quick. Okay, so one of the things um, that if you don't know a lot about Stoa is that they actually are one of the original five brands that did make, that produced these Flieger watches uh, during World War II, so Really cool that basically you're not buying something that is just kind of uh, a cheap homage. It's definitely affordable, um, but this is a little bit better of an homage because it's actually paying tribute to models that this company, uh, or the namesake of the company at least, um, produced back in the day. So I think that's really nice that they do have a quite amount of lineage and heritage, and um, it's, it's very impressive. The retail price for these is uh, $650 uh, US, direct from Stoa, is of course 40 millimeters in diameter with a 10.2 millimeter uh, thickness or height. The case is bead blasted, as you can see, that really nice satiny finish all over the case, nice and even. It's a nice uh, bright uh, blast finish too, because sometimes the blasted finish can come off looking a lot darker. So I was really pleased to see the brightness that they were able to really extract from this particular model by having a more fine blasted finish there. So really good on Stowa for that choice. And then the crystal, as you can see, is actually a nice double domed crystal. So when you look at it, even at the sharpest viewing angles, there's not going to be any distortion which is really nice. And then of course the angles of the, uh, the crystal there actually flow really, really quite well with the rest of the case and the way that bezel swoops uh, and has that uh, bit of a steep incline there, but it still softens at that light chamfer right there on the edge of the crystal. It does, of course, have inner AR coating, which is going to be a bit hard to notice uh, when you have the bright studio lights kind of directly glaring on them. But as far as when you're outside or when you're not under uh, kind of direct reflection, it's definitely going to read very well. And as you can see here, when you look at it without uh, all the light kind of distracting you, it, it does definitely feel like the type of dial you can just reach out and touch. So really nicely done from that standpoint. 
Now the movement inside as we covered is the standard ETA uh, 2824. It is, this is pretty much their basic uh, model there. Uh, no frills or anything like that. But, you know, it, it's definitely still finished to a pretty nice quality and uh, the rotor definitely does look nice with some custom branding there. So really cool from that standpoint. Now, as far as the case back goes, it is display, which is great, screw in. Um, and then the, one of the nice things about the dial is, of course, it's also matte black, but the loom that they use is actually Superluminova BGW9 versus the C3 of the classic model. So one of the things you're going to notice um, here in the video is that the, the BGW9 is going to appear a little bit wider. Um, it's more of a clean look and definitely ties more into the modern style versus the C3 is going to have a bit of a green tint to it. I'm not sure if it's going to be washed out um, by the camera here, but you know, I can see with my eyes that uh, it definitely is a bit more of a green tint to it, even when uh, fully lit here and, and not uh, needing to glow or anything. Uh, as far as the water resistance, you know, they're both going to be uh, five meters, uh, I'm sorry, 50 meters or five atmospheres. And then they both have the 20 millimeter lug width. But one of the really, really nice features here of, of this particular new release is, I got to say, let me get it focused there. This strap is absolutely outstanding. This thing is just so soft. It's a non-tapering strap, which isn't my favorite kind, but I mean, it definitely ties into the more retro aesthetic here that they're going for and definitely does come off as being a bit more uh, versatile as well. Um, but this thing is so soft. It reminds me more of the leather on, a, on an expensive jacket than it does the leather for a watch strap. It's just extremely soft. I mean, even in comparison to this aftermarket collar ab strap, which is still very soft, um, but it's much thicker here. And then of course it has more of the vintage tones and vibes to it here versus this one is going to be just a little bit more modern and it has a really, really nicely executed um, uh, buckle there, which is also really, really nice. So let's go ahead and get this on the wrist. Okay, now as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this wears just about perfectly. You know, with that classic 40 millimeter diameter, it definitely wears very nicely. And because of that outer, you know, um, index there for the minutes, it really does fill the dial nicely. And then you do have the numerals uh, that are a little bit more enlarged for a more modern look, which also helps fill the dial as well. Let me bring it up a little bit closer for you. So of course, up close, it's gonna definitely seem a lot bigger than it does because there's, uh, you know, a little bit has to do with the shape of the, uh, the lens, but at the same time, also the perspective is definitely thrown off a bit. But when you can see a little bit more of the arm there and you see a little bit more of the hand, it definitely shows that this fits more right than it does uh, uh, oversized or large. And now in comparison, they definitely pretty much wear exactly the same because these are not essentially the same case. They are the same case. It's pretty much the same watch um, with just kind of a different look this one being definitely more on the retro vibe and you've definitely seen this watch pop up many times on my channel um, and then here you have uh, kind of a new contender for something I'd say even a little bit more versatile um, and definitely more modern which is really cool I do really enjoy the blued hands here because I think having that little pop of color does really help also with versatility let's say you're wearing a pair of blue jeans or whatever you don't have to necessarily be kind of all blacked out um, like you have here with a really monochromatic uh, you know, colors uh, layout there. So really, really nicely done. They wear excellently. So let's go ahead and get some loom shots. All right, let's go ahead and hit the lights. So as you can see, one of the really big differences here is the indexes. Now with the classic model not having loom indexes and they're just pretty much printed on there and flowing very nicely. Um, the nice thing about this new model is of course, apart from the blue hue you get from the, uh, 
the loom there is that you actually do have all of the seconds busted out so that's really really nice um, as well seconds uh, slash minutes uh, depending on what you're tracking for at the time so it's really really nice to see and there's actually a thicker application as you can see that um, just looking at the dial there and one of the things I wanted to point out while we're looking at this in the dark which which makes it a little easier to just look at what's on the dial versus kind of uh, the total watch is you can definitely see there's a shift in the proportions with the uh, new Verus model having definitely the dial fit, feeling like it's just filled a bit better versus uh, the Flieger Classic, which the layout is definitely gonna be, I feel like it's a bit more purposeful. You're kind of only seeing what you need to see and what they want you to see, and it definitely is paying more tribute to the original uh, Flieger models, but I think uh, really what the Verus brings is a, a kind of a new take and, and a bit of a bonus. So I definitely do like that, but let's go ahead and move into some low light transition shots. Now, of course my hot studio lights do do a great job of simulating pure daylight um, when you're outside and outdoors and everything, but uh, what I like to do is also do a low light transition so you can just kind of get an idea of what your watch is going to look like if you were wearing this out in the real world and you're, you know, getting it out of your vehicle, coming in and out of an office space, uh, or really just going from a bright well lit area to a darker one. So as you can see, even in transition, although the C3 is generally going to have more of a bright initial blast, because of the application of the BGW9, it definitely is is no slouch in comparison and I'd say almost outperforms uh, the classic there as you can see as far as legibility goes so definitely really really nice big fan here let's go ahead and get the lights back on alrighty so you know, on the wrist, it definitely wears just like the classic, but with more of a modern aesthetic. As far as model variants go, yeah, there's, you know, a date option, no date option, and then there's also the 43 millimeter uh, sport option, which, you know, of course, for the, uh, that's pretty much been a staple of Stowe's Flieger line as well. And the nice thing about that uh, larger model is it actually has increased water resistance as well, so that's really cool. Now, as far as comparable models go, I'd say this is a bit of a cross between the the uh, Stoa Flieger Classic and the Namasco DS30. Now lucky for you guys I actually own a DS30 so what I'll do is I'll actually bring one in here from out of frame and I will say actually let's go ahead and get these in. I, I feel like the um, <laughs> The Stoa is a bit of a, this one is like a cross between the two. It's like if you were to take the Flieger Classic and kind of, if it had a baby with the Damasco DS30, I mean, even from its uh, blasted finish, um, which is even a bit darker, of course, because it is a hardened steel um, versus the, uh, the brighter blast here. And then just a kind of more... Um, I'd say just modern, uh, you know, lines that are there, a bit bolder, a little bit more in your face uh, to make a bit more of a statement versus being something that's really focused on, um, you know, just legibility and just functional, uh, you know, nature or or just paying homage to the original uh, A dials. So. You know, I'd say the handset, as you can see, are definitely very similar from the Damasco to the Stoa. So maybe you're not super on board with the Damasco. You like the idea of a modern Flieger, but you still want it to have that kind of old school DNA. And that's where I think this new Flieger Virus uh, has an option for you. Um, I, I think this could definitely be the one if you're looking for something that has that B-Blast finish. You know, if you have a bunch of NATOs with blasted hardware or whatnot, um, or you just want a finish that's going to be just a little bit more modern and um and kind of the way that it looks and and kind of can change it up uh versus a bunch of your other watches you know pretty much uh mixtures of brushed and polished are going to be very standard um for most wrist watches so when you do have something that that has such a great execution as far as that um, nice satin blast goes it's definitely nice to have that as part of your collection and um, can be very very versatile 
So I'd say, you know, bottom line, this is still one of the most balanced options in the segment. Now, it's not super niche like you would get with the Damasco. I mean, obviously somebody off the street's not gonna wanna pay, you know, basically a thousand bucks for this watch and not know anything about it. You know, they, if they don't care about hardened steel, if they don't care about the beautiful legibility and, and that, you know, that sapphire that you can't even see right now. Um, part of that is because it's a flat sapphire versus the dome, so it's just not catching the reflections on what's hanging on my wall the same way that these two stoas are. So to be fair, um, it's not as much the uh, the AR coating uh, consistency. It's it's more just the shape of the particular. Um, crystal which which does make it a bit more susceptible overall uh to reflections but you know it's just one of those things i really do like this piece i man i i tell you what this uh strap is awesome it's so soft um and yeah i just think it's a cool i'm really glad that they did this because i was thinking you know if i was to design a stoa flieger i would have done uh, a kind of a modern take a modern spin but still in the more traditional um you know scale because they do have a bit of a modern flieger already kind of in their line but it's a lot larger it's like a 43 millimeter and for a watch that's going to be not have too much bezel on it and be mostly dial um 43 is definitely a bit big um you know at least it is on my watch i don't think there's anything wrong with like it doesn't look horrible um 43 is not the end of the world huge or anything like that but i think for that type of watch um there's just not enough filling the dial um you know so i think it's really great that they did a kind of a modern take uh but also did retain a lot of that dna which i think is just great so you know let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you did like the video please do hit like and if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys